Good morning. Welcome to the 21st edition of the India Today Conclave. Honorable guests, honorable finance minister, welcome. The theme of the conclave last year was the India moment. Well, I can confidently say the India moment has only got bigger, much bigger. Let me be ambitious and call it the India movement. This way, we remind ourselves of the work that needs to be done so that we keep asking ourselves the big questions. What's next? What can we do today to ensure that the India moment lasts as long as possible and convert it into a movement so that it transforms India like no other in the past? To me, the best way to build a future is to have a clear vision of that future and then work towards turning that vision into reality. Today, I want to submit to you five images of India's future that I think are within our grasp. Firstly, forget about the poverty line, which is so often discussed in India, and let's convert into what I would call the dignity line. Less than a month ago, the government released data that suggested that extreme poverty in India has almost eliminated. It is now indeed restricted to less than 2% of India's population. But I must tell you that extreme poverty is a very low bar to clear. According to the World Bank, poverty is defined as a consumption expenditure of dollars 2.15 PPV dollars a day. That's purchasing power parity. It means a dollar is about half the value of the US dollar. This means roughly 1,200 to 1,500 rupees a month, or just 40 to 80 rupees a day. In the last 10 years, the present government has done a remarkable job of lifting more than 200 people, 200 million people above the extreme poverty line. Now let's set the bar to dignity line. It's a line that measures the means to lead a life of basic dignity. That includes food, of course, but it also includes access to basic housing, electricity, clean water, education, and health care. And of course, a job that gives a basic income. I think Prime Minister Modi has grasped this idea of delivering a life of dignity for the, bottom, for the people at the bottom of the pyramid from the time he took office 10 years ago. That is why his emphasis on schemes like Swachh Bharat and delivering tap water and elixiri to every household. Also, Niti Aayog does not measure poverty by poverty line anymore, but by what they call multidimensional poverty. This is a most welcome step. The current estimates suggest 11.3% of Indians are below the multidimensional poverty line. Five years from now, we should target either zero or no more than 2% of Indians below this line. That's when every Indian will have a fair opportunity at to making what life offers to all of us. Second is education. No country has become a developed one without a good education system. In education, we have solved the enrollment problem. But what happens or doesn't happen between enrollment and graduation remains unaddressed. This shows up in the large teaching and learning gaps, on the one hand, and historically high youth employment, unemployment on the other. A recent survey showed 25% of 14 to 18-year-olds could not read a simple class two-level text in their regional language. Less than 50% of them could not solve grade two-level maths. This is a very sad state of affairs that does not bode well for the future of this country. Quality of education from curriculum to pedagogy to delivery hasn't kept pace with enrollments. This is true at all levels of education, primary, secondary, and college. At college level, education must be linked to employability. Most recent data show that youth unemployment to be at 16.5%. In five years from now, we must aim to reduce our youth unemployment to no more than 5%. This has to change dramatically and quickly. 
If we use it seriously, AI can help us there. In a matter of months, not years, our children could have access to the highest quality education customized to their level of understanding, delivered to them right at their home in their native language for almost free of cost. This is distinct, do, distinctly doable because India has one of the finest public infrastructure, digital infrastructure in the world. I hope the government, NGOs, and tech companies in India join to bring such solutions to every student. These are all AI images, by the way. So I see AI as a source of free intellectual energy. Let's open it up for our young minds.